Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome to a different sort of video. So finally, I want to let you guys know that the 2010-11 roster build that I've been working on for like the last month is out on roster sharing. Well, it isn't actually as I'm recording this right now, but by the end of this video, I'm going to be putting it up. So you, by the time you guys see this video, it will be live. And uh, this roster build is a little bit different than my other roster builds in a few different ways. Uh, so the first way that it's a little bit different is I did use a little bit of advanced analytics going into uh, players' offensive awareness and defensive awareness uh, using Evolving Hockey. So you're going to see a little bit of weird like overalls for like offensive awareness and defensive awareness, but it shouldn't affect the simulation too much. At least I hope it doesn't. I did do a few test runs and it seems to be assimilating okay, but uh, there is some weird offensive awareness and defensive awareness depending on specific players, which I will show you guys a couple examples of in a little bit. Now, the other difference with this roster build is during the 2010-11 season, there was actually a lot of weirdly weird contracts that were really long in length. Uh, so you're going to see a few contracts, like for example, Ilya Kovalchuk signed to a 15-year deal. You also see guys like Duncan Keith signed for like 13 years. So there's going to be a little bit of weird contracts in franchise mode, but it doesn't really affect like trade values and stuff for those players, which is kind of interesting. Uh, so if you're doing like an Islanders franchise mode, you're going to get stuck with a very terrible Rick DiPietro for a long-term deal. So just be aware of that when you start up a franchise mode. As for setting up these franchise modes for or to uh, work with my 2010-11 roster build, it's pretty much the exact same as the other ones. Just make sure you move like teams like Detroit and Columbus to the Western Conference instead of the East, that type of thing. You might have to actually look up the actual standings during that time period to try and figure out where you want each team to play in each like division. But I would recommend to still put like the North America Future Stars in the East and then Europe United in the West because those two teams are in this build. But yeah, that's pretty much the main differences with this roster build compared to my other roster builds. There's also a lot of cool new jerseys in this roster build, which I'm not going to show you all of them, but I'll show you a few of them because this isn't going to be a full-on roster overview where I show you guys each team and stuff like that because that's going to take another few hours if I did that. And I want you guys to kind of experience this roster build on your own. So I'm just going to give you guys a little bit of a glimpse into it before we actually push publish and put it out online. Um, so let's uh, show you guys a little bit of some of the rating stuff that I was mentioning with Evolving Hockey. It's a little bit different because I've never used advanced analytics before. Uh, but uh, it's kind of interesting when you look at some players that you think were like really good defensively, but they're actually more offensively minded. So examples with this. Um, which I will show you here with uh, the Buffalo Sabres, for example. Somebody like Steve Montador, you would think of more of a defensive defenseman and enforcer, but if you look at his advanced analytics for like OFF, which is offense, and DF, DEF, which is defense, uh, he actually was a pretty good offensive uh, like kind of awareness D-man around this point in time so uh, his offense awareness is in 91 his defensive awareness is in 86 but you still shouldn't see him putting up insane numbers because he doesn't have good shooting and his passing isn't really that crazy good so you should still see him maybe put up like 20 something points but he's not going to be simulating like uh, I don't know like a Drew Doughty Eric Carlson type of idea where they put up like 50 60 points so he should still simulate somewhat accurately Another couple weird examples of this are like, for example, in Pittsburgh, you would think Brooks Orpig is a defensive defenseman, which is actually the player type I gave him. But interestingly enough, uh, Brooks Orpik actually has better offensive awareness than defensive awareness, once again, because of analytics. Uh, it's kind of weird that that is the case, because I didn't think Brooks Orpik was more offensively minded, but apparently he was. And yeah, so there's a little bit of weird examples like that throughout the roster build. You also see guys like... Uh, I think I made the maximum offensive awareness and defensive awareness at 95. There's nobody with a 95 defensive awareness, which is interesting. But you got guys like Crosby who have 95 offensive awareness, but an 84 defensive awareness because around this point in time, they weren't as good defensively as they were offensively. It's uh, just based off of like a three to four year ETA, basically, since the analytics came into existence in 0708. So there's a little bit of difference with that. Uh, you will see some guys that are really good in both ends. For example, Jordan Stahl has 87 offense and 87 defense because of his analytics. You also see guys that are very terrible in one end and really good in the other. Example, Jason Spezza. He has 95 offensive awareness, but an 81 defensive awareness because his defensive analytics are pretty garbage. 
Another guy example like that would be a uh, guy like Jack Johnson, who is very terrible defensively, and that's known through the analytic community. He's got 87 offensive awareness, but he has the lowest defensive rating I could give a player, which is an 80, because I didn't want to give players like 70 defensive awareness, because it just seems a little bit weird, but uh, he shouldn't simulate that good defensively, unless the team, I guess, around him is that good. Now, as I was mentioning, there is some crazy contracts in this roster build, so I'm going to just show you one of them, which is Rick DiPietro. So, you're going to have like players like this, so DiPietro is a 77 overall at this point because he was pretty cooked at this point in time. His durability wasn't good, all that type of thing. Like, we actually made his durability a 50 overall. I should actually lower that down to like a 36 before I put out this roster build. Uh, but as you can see, he's signed for 11 years at 4.5, and when I was doing some test runs, he drops down to like a 74 after only a few seasons, so you're going to be paying like a 74 overall, 4.5 million for like 8 seasons one at that point, which would be kind of nuts, so... It's going to be interesting to see what happens with teams if they can actually trade away these long-term deals. Guys like Ilya Kovalchuk is another one, like I was saying, signed for 15 years at 6.67. There's also like Duncan Keith, Marion Hossa, Mike Richards, Jeff Carter, those type of contracts that are all really long-term. So just keep that in mind when you start up a franchise mode. But I would recommend still turning off the salary cap because a lot of these teams are all under the uh, minimum cap space, or minimum cap hits, so... Just keep that in mind and probably turn off the cap if you're going to do a franchise mode. But if you want to, you could always turn it on. But I just don't know how it affects this type of roster build. So, um, so yeah, that's basically the main differences with this roster build uh, uh, from others. I'm just going to quickly skim through each team's roster. I'm not going to show you guys anybody in specific, but I'll just go like this. And you guys can see who are the top rated players on each team. Just because, like I said, I do not want this video being like an hour and a half long like my other roster build videos. Because I know a lot of you guys won't stick around for that long. And I'll show you guys a few of the jerseys that are pretty sick that are in this roster build. But not all of them because, like I said, I want you guys to experience this on your own if you are on Xbox uh, Series X or S. And if you're not on either of those consoles and you want to know certain player overalls and ratings and stuff like that... Um, you could feel free to ask me. Now, I don't like responding to everybody about certain ratings and stuff like that and player faces because I get a ton of requests to do that and it's very time consuming for me to actually look back and see which ones I used. Uh, so if you have any questions though, you could still ask me and I'll try my best to actually answer them down below in the comments. But yeah, it's pretty much the team ratings and yeah, there we go. So those are like the player ratings and all that sort of thing. I want to quickly show you guys a few of the jerseys I made for some teams. Not all of them, because like I said, I want you guys to have a lot of fun with this roster once you actually download it. Some of you probably are already downloading it before I'm actually finishing this video, but um, a few of the jerseys I want to showcase you guys. Yeah, you guys would have seen this actually on the community tab is for the Atlanta Thrashers. I have some pretty sick, uh, sick jerseys for them. This alternate is probably my favorite. It actually turned out really well, way better than I expected. So you got some sick alternates like that alternate. Uh, there's a couple other pretty cool ones that I'll show you guys. Like, for example, the Florida Panthers. We do have these jerseys, and we also have their powder blue alternates, which actually turned out pretty nice. I think they could have turned out a little bit better, but I still like how they turned out. There's a couple other good teams for jerseys, including... We're, we're going to skip Nashville because there's a Nashville alternate, which is the navy blue one that you guys will get to use in this roster build. Uh, but there's also a couple word mark ones, which is kind of interesting because a lot of word marks were used around this point in time. So you got the S for the Sens jersey that said Sens across it. And this one turned out pretty well for the most part. Uh, there's another word mark that I'll show you guys, and then that's all I'll show you guys for jerseys because I don't want you to be here all day watching this video. I want you guys experiencing the roster more. So you can see this one has the B for bolts. This one actually turned out really well, as well and I really like it. It's probably one of my favorite jerseys in this build. So, yeah, there's all that. And as I was mentioning before, pretty much similar to the 07 roster build, you will have the North America Future Stars, which are going to be replacing Seattle if you do a franchise mode. So keep that in mind. There's a lot of good young players on that team. And then you also have the Europe United, which is actually a lot better of a team than in prior roster builds because you got guys like Dominic Hasek who are over there because Hasek was actually playing in the KHL in 10-11. You got Yarmor Yager who was making his comeback to the NHL the year after this. And you got like Radulov over there. So this European United team is actually pretty good. 
and once again they're replacing the Vegas Golden Knights so if you do substitute in my created teams in franchise mode just keep that in mind I recommend you use like you could use actually all the NHL teams regular jerseys but if for some reason you want to use my created teams you could always do that too which will give a little bit more authentic logos and all that stuff which I recommend personally because I really just like how the authentic logos look when I use them and all that type of idea in jerseys so uh, that's pretty much that. Also, I'll show you quickly, I guess, the Dallas Stars jersey, just because those ones turned out pretty nice as well. Because they were a major difference from their 07 ones that they used to have. So, there is that. And I think that's pretty much it for the this video, if I'm not mistaken. We are going to go upload a roster right now. We're going to do that in this video, guys, so you can see me upload the rosters. So, we will go share my files. So you guys can see this in real time action and you can see what it's exactly named. So there's my other rosters just in case you are coming here for the first time and you want to check out these. We are currently, I believe, fifth in all time downloads on this first roster build. These other ones are all approaching like 500 and 1000 downloads, which is nuts. So thank you guys for the support on those rosters before we actually upload our current ones. So let's go to upload save files and we are going to go new save file, which is our current one. And we're going to call this one, since I do not actually have a uh, pre-deadline roster for this roster build, this is all post-deadline. The reason being is because I do have a few other rosters that people have suggested, and I really would like to get to those ones. So uh, just keep that in mind that this is a post-deadline roster. So throwback, we are going to call this throwback 2011, just because that's probably the best I can name it. Hopefully that's not too much characters. I wish I could add numbers, but for some reason I can't. So yeah, throwback 2011, that makes sense. So we'll call it that. So that is there, and now we should be able to select this. And yeah, we should be able to enter a file description, which I will do that off camera, but I will press upload shortly. And you guys will see this when once you see this video, it will already be up. So go download this roster, go download my other rosters, go download some other community rosters as well, because just using this feature in general is going to make EA want to use it more so and keep it in future games as well. So anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed the roster, a little kind of rundown it was. It was kind of a quick one, uh, but I kind of just wanted to make a quick video to showcase what I had out there. So if you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.